With the NAB 2024 trade show coming to an end, here's a quick recap of what caught our attention before and during the trade show. And as always, don't forget to drop your list of favourite announcements in the comments below. Let's briefly start with the major pre-NAB announcements. The most obvious was the public beta 8.6 for the pocket line of cameras, bringing a slew of new major features to the much-loved system. We reported on this at the time, predicting this software combination with the massive update to the Blackmagic Design camera app for iPhones would be a software release to soften the blow of the upcoming box camera release, which ended up being the Pixar 6 two weeks later. Nikon and Red both continued to issue statements reassuring customers everything is okay, but then during NAB, Red's chief designer, Matthew Tremblay, resigned, leaving the door open for continued speculation about the takeover, which is all wrapped up. But really, the most notable products in the days leading up to NAB this year really were the sheer amount of lenses and light announcements. Nissi announced their 1840 and 135 Athena Primes. Fujinon announced its Duvo HZK 14 or 100 mm portable zoom lens. Atlas announced the 18 or 135 and 200 mm Orion 2x anamorphics. Eryx dropped a 65 mm T1.5 Prime for pre-order. Venus Optics slashed the prices of the 12 mm 0D lens to 1200 USD. Then announced a set of three Laura range zooms: an 11 to 18, 17 to 50, and a 50 to 130 all T2.9 and PL mount. Dakina added a 40, 65, and 105 and 135 lenses to the Vista P range and the Tuna Module 8 release versions for X and L mount cameras. Shamira announced their Pro Tube Light Banks, Nanlite expanded the Pavo Slim line with the 240B, 240C and 60CL, Aperture announced their new Pro Apps and Lighting Infinimat system, LumiWall produced a new green screen lighting set, Ari announced their new L series plus LED Fresnels and KinoFlow announced the Club Icon 6. We also saw a massive influx in camera monitors, grip gear, battery technology, camera media, camera firmware updates from Panasonic. But the biggest announcement prior to NAB was the DJI RS4 Pro and the Focus Pro, which caused a massive stir ahead of the show, which we will cover in our end of month tech quickie wrap up. So make sure that you're subscribed not to miss any of that content. When it comes to the show, it's undebatable which company stole the limelight. Blackmagic Design finally released a box camera, the Pixar 6, which already has YouTubers making videos told that I'm selling my Komodo X for the Pixis. I mean, the internet just blew up with the announcement, which for the most part looks like an incredible camera. But really, it's a repackaged 6K full frame in a more ergonomic body with better IO, same sensor, frame rates, recording options, but with three lens mount options, CF Express Type B media, and a new EVF. The changes have overwhelmingly been approved by the Blackmagic Design user community and has most likely killed off the emerging box camera modding market. But as big as this announcement was, the real showstoppers were the two new Ursa Cine models, the 12K full frame LF and the 17K IMAX variants. Both cameras coming with significant improvements over the Super 35 12K model. Viewing Grant Petty announced the new sensors with a cheeky grin on his face was oddly the most satisfying thing to watch. Blackmagic Design really swung for the fences and they most certainly hit a home run with these camera announcements. The 12K version is the one that most will likely buy as it has a custom LF 16 stop dynamic range sensor, high frame rates, internal NDs, new EVF, all the connectivity that you could want, resolve color inbuilt into the camera sensor at a center level, wireless and wide connectivity. It just has too many features for this video, but I've covered it in this one up here if you're interested. The 17K IMAX camera is the one that captured my attention. And as much as the detractors want to put these cameras down, who else is offering an IMAX camera to the masses? Anyone who thinks that these cameras won't steal market share from the Arri LF, Arri 35, Arri 65, Sony Venice and Red V Raptors are just kidding themselves. Yes, these are the most expensive cameras that Blackmagic Design has ever made. One is just missing internal ND filters, but they are by far the most innovative cameras that have been released by any camera company in a long time and they're still cheaper than all of the other leading brands. So. If I had an award to give, Blackmagic Design would get the inaugural Imaginary Cinechip NAB Innovation Award. So there you go, sprinkle some dust on it. But here's where it gets even more interesting at NAB, more lenses. The set that was announced that intrigues me the most was the DZO Arl, Arles Vista Primes in 25, 35, 50, 75, and 100 mil at T1.4 in PL mount. And I didn't say that right, so I'm sorry if you speak French. 
I'll do better next time. Named after a French town, DZO has stated they plan to add an additional five focal lengths, which would make an amazing set of Vista Vision lenses, which could be perfect for an Ursa Cine full frame LF or Pixar 6. I can't find any footage and there's no further information on these lenses apart from what has been announced at NAB. DZO also dropped another big bombshell with their macro 65, 135 and 180 Pavo two times anamorphic lenses. The new lenses join the existing 28, 32, 40, 55, 75 and 100 mil focal lengths in the series. And it's great to see two longer focal lengths fully fleshing out the lens lineup because they are much more affordable than the European brand equivalents. Viltrox also expanded their anamorphic lineup with the announcement of new Epic 25 and 100mm T2 1.33 times full frame anamorphic lenses. These two new focal lengths join the existing 35, 50 and 75mm T2 lenses in the series. At 4,000 each or 17,300 for a set of five, these are shaping up to be a very good set of mid-range lenses. Overshadowing these anamorphic primes was by far the announcement of Viltrox's giant 30 to 300 10 times zoom. The Luna 30 to 300 T4 full frame zoom lens was created as a statement to showcase optical quality at the highest level. Weighing it at 15 kilos, it truly is a beast and sports a huge, 165 millimeter front diameter and a four foot minimum focus distance. Viltrox is targeting the lens at wildlife and sports shooters and they apparently already have some interest from NASCAR. At 65,000 US dollars, that's still not expensive considering the focal range. You just need to look at the European manufacturers. Blazar showed off their new Kato super budget friendly two times anamorphic primes, which mostly cover full frame sensors. The four lens set includes a 40mm T2.4, 50T2, 85-2.8, and 125T3.2. The Kato series will feature a traditional anamorphic look by balancing retro characteristics with a clean modern look. The lenses have barrel distortion in their anamorphic design and feature a neutral silver flare that takes the color from any direct light source. So for many, these could be a far better budget option than Blazar's Remus series. However, the Kados don't exactly cover all large format sensors and they also vary in T-stops. Pricing hasn't been announced, but I will update you once it's all confirmed. Something that I've been looking for for a while is a good action camera. And I think that Insta360 just announced what I'd been waiting on. The X4 is an 8K 360 degree action camera. It features a five nanometer AI chip that supports a smart control system with much improved battery performance and a host of AI powered shooting and editing features. I'm totally new to the action cam world, so I'm interested to hear what you all think about it in the comments. The 8K 30 frames and 4K at up to 100 frames per second with the ability to capture and reframe everything sounds very appealing to me. And it also has a 72 megapixel photo capture mode. But as a Mac user, the only thing that I'm concerned about is the XFAT card formatting because my M1 Mac never seems to recognize that. But the product that surprised me the most was Tilter's CT08 and CT12 75mm three-stage fluid head tripods. Totally didn't see that coming. Both feature plus 90 and minus 60 tilt ranges, have I Either eight or ten stops of counterbalance are made from aerospace aluminium grade alloy processed through CNC precision machining and depending on whether you go for the two stage one touch carbon fiber legs or the three stage telescope legs would mainly depend on your application the three stage looks great for travel and the two stage looks like a solid budget option for studio and location work next the new lower price on the blackmagic design video assist also caught my eye but i believe that the price reductions are making way for a new line of video assist that will be paired with the new line of cameras and be used used via the USB-C connection for picture and camera control. As a resolve power user, the cheaper Blackmagic Design Mocha panel was also interesting and I would buy it if I wasn't using a Mac that struggles with connecting to Bluetooth devices because my M1 just constantly boots off everything that's on Bluetooth. The new Blackmagic EVF is also very attractive for the money and anyone buying the Pixis or the new Ursa Cine really should try and bundle that together. If you haven't used the older version of the EVF sold with the Ursas, they are by far the best EVFs that I've ever used. Look, and I definitely prefer them over the Arri ones, which are stupid expensive. And I believe for the cost of the Arri EVF, you can buy a full frame Pixis and the new Blackmagic Design EVF. But I'm curious if anyone has had a chance to look through the new EVF at NAB, please share your thoughts about them in the comments because I'm not the only one that would like to hear from you. So what do you think about my list? What would you add or subtract? Let me know. And until the next video, you should check out one of these videos here. Swipe up, tag your friends. 
like and subscribe, comment below. If I make this follow, don't let this flop. Wait till the 